Automotive power work in the depot is an important feature of operating efficiency. The routine work of the shed is just as important as are the periodical inspections, service and general repairs. On the work of the shed depends to a very large extent the successful running of the engine, and lack of care may lead to complications of the most far-reaching character. Every train to time on every day of the week cannot be successfully achieved without the wholehearted cooperation of the men of the motive power depots. The hose bag arm on most modern water columns swings clear automatically, but even then the arm may get stuck as this one has done. Had the driver not been alert, he would probably have run into the hose bag and damaged it. See that all hose bags are left clear of the track and secured after use. Delay here is liable to hold up following engines. Unlike this one, the engine should be set so that the hose bag is central over the hole in the tender, otherwise it'll probably fly out. Inattention leads to waste. Watch this incident associated with watering an engine. The LMS uses 9,600 million gallons of water a year for motive power purposes at a cost of 300,000 pounds. If each engineman could prevent the waste of only five gallons a day, the annual saving would be 2,750 pounds. Water, water running to waste. Save water and save money. There are many wrong ways of coaling an engine, but only one right way. Modern coaling plants, though automatic in their working, need to be used intelligently. First point, establish that the water is running. Second point, see that the lid to the tender tank is closed. Thirdly, if this engine had been properly coaled, the pieces wouldn't have fallen off the tender. This is the right way of coaling an engine. Resist the temptation to put on that last 10 hundredweight. Half of it will spill at the plant, the other half will drop off in the yard or on the permanent way. The LMS uses five and a half million tons of coal a year, which costs four million pounds. An appreciable portion of it never goes into the firebox. In the interests of efficiency and economy, in your own interests, this waste must be stopped. Wrong methods of coaling may have serious consequences. A piece of coal may fall from the tender a hundred times without doing any damage. But the next time, it may land on a crowded platform. Or may hit a plate layer with fatal results. From the coaling plant to the ash pits. Proper regulation should ensure that both pits, where there are two, are used to advantage. Dislocation and delay are caused by a number of engines being on one road none on the second. When going on to an empty pit, take up the furthest forward position or you'll block the road for any following engine. Now the fireman of the first engine 
and get on with the job of clearing the smoke box ashes. On most ash lifting plants, the skip drops automatically to the bottom of the chute. But some plants are not automatic and the skip may be left at the top. Cases have occurred where ashes have been thrown down the chute when the skip has not been there. Then the chute has to be emptied by hand. More wasted labour. Engines should receive a careful examination by the driver. On the first engine, the fireman is about to get down into the pit to rake out the ash pan. The driver is making his examination. Open your damper, George. The driver leaves his examination to comply with the fireman's request. The damper should, of course, have already been opened. Returning, the driver resumes his examination at a different point from the one at which he left, so that he misses entirely the broken brake block on the rear driving wheel. Engine should receive a careful examination by the driver. The fireman sees that the ashes in the ash pan are properly slaked. The ashes fall cleanly with a plop and there's very little dust. It is essential that the firebox should be left clean. Clinker left in the corners makes it difficult to keep up a good fire when the engine is on the road. Have you ever had this happen to you? Thought so. The fireman slogs away in an effort to keep up the pressure, all to no avail. Pressure falls, the engine loses time, and the arrival indicator board shows the result. Not too good, is it? Always remember to have proper regard to the correct methods of engine disposal. It makes for efficiency. Correct methods are as easy to carry out as are wrong methods. The fireman rightly walks into the shed in front of his engine to see that the road is clear. Be careful to observe the correct routine when leaving an engine. The stop cocks and regulator should be closed. The cylinder cocks left open. See that the boiler is well filled up. Leave the reversing gear in mid-gear. And of course, the handbrake hard on. Then you know your engine is safe. On the way to book off, the fireman hands in his tools. Dirty. Yes, we thought so too by the untidy look of the bucket. Still, all the tools apparently are there. But it's the fireman's job to clean his tools, not the store's issuers. And so, to wash. Here, have a heart. I said wash. Misuse of materials leads to waste. What would your wife say to this? Proper motive power work in the depot is an important feature of operating efficiency. Every train to time on every day of the week cannot be successfully achieved without the wholehearted cooperation of the men of the motive power depots.